Um, almost one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary and welcome to uh, everyone online on this lovely day to worship our Lord. And we have some ministry opportunities at our church. And uh, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock uh, is the knitting group. And if you are led and feel want, that you want to converse with Nancy, you can do so by signing up at the back of the church Tuesday, either at 2 or p.m. or 6 p 30 p.m. or Wednesday, 11 a.m. or 4 p.m. She would always welcome your thoughts and um, ideas. On Wednesday also at 9 a.m. is the men's group. And from 5 to 6 p.m. is our prayer group time, and I just want to share just a small a few thoughts on that. That if on Wednesdays, a little before 5, the Holy Spirit might nudge you to come, come in the front door of the Wesley house. We are right there in the couch chair area, lobby area. And it's very um, easygoing. Uh, the, the kind of what we do is we share a little bit about our week. How was your week? And you share whatever you want to share. And then we pray. You can say whatever you want to say or not say whatever you don't want to say. It's um, really uh, very welcoming and warm and wonderful. So you're always, always welcome. Wednesdays at 5. On Thursdays, Thursday, uh, Pastor Nancy is continuing her study on homosexuality in the Bible, which will be offered two times, 2 to 3.30 p.m. and 6.30 to 
8 p.m. Hi, can I just interrupt there for a second? Um, since uh, there were more people coming at night and just one person coming in the afternoon, the one person coming in the afternoon is going to join the evening session. So we're not going to have the afternoon session unless somebody comes to me today and says, yeah, I really would like to come in the afternoon, which is absolutely positively fine. So if you want to come in the afternoon, that's fine. But if I don't hear anything today, we're, we're just going to have the evening sessions. Okay, thanks. Wonderful. And on Friday, beginning at 5, we're going to have a ham and scalloped potato dinner at downstairs in the Fellowship Hall, where a free will offering will be accepted, but not necessary. And as always, we have Sunday school, which we had six young people in today. Yay, God. Mm -hmm. At 9.30, downstairs um, in the youth room, beginning in the youth room at 9.30. And then, of course, we have worship at 10.30. Are there any other announcements that anyone else would like to share? Okay, well, I would ask that you stand, if you are able, for our call to worship. <clears throat> Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. God is the one who keeps us on track. Our first hymn today is from the Faith We Sing book, number 2040, Awesome God. Please be seated. Our God is an awesome God. No doubt about that. And having lifted our voices in praise, let us turn our hearts to confession. Would you pray with me as printed in your bulletin or on the wall? Merciful God, forgive us when we think we know better than you and try to do things in our own understanding and strength. Give us the desire to seek and follow your will for our lives and in the life of our congregation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Silently, let us confess our personal sins before Almighty God. Hear the good news. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, each one of us is forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I would invite kids and anybody of any age who would like to come forward to come at this time. Good morning again. 
We saw each other in Sunday school. So good to see you. And you better be believe that Mr. Bear has his scarf on today and it's not coming off. So it is pretty cold out there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do either of you have your driver's license? No? Okay. You have a new car, but you're not driving it? No? Okay. Well, might might have to wait a few years for that, right? Okay. All right. Well, um, here, here's something when, when you do get your driver's license and um, something that, that you'll be familiar with. I, I don't know if you can tell what this is. It's a real cheap one, but it's an ice scraper for the car, okay? which probably several people use this morning, <laughs> all right? So why do we need an ice scraper? Any idea? Yeah, yeah. When, when it's winter, the, the windshield and the windows get frozen, and we have to scrape the ice, the ice off so we can see. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, so why did I bring an ice scraper in my bag today? Hmm. Well, sometimes it's hard for us to see what God wants us to do. And we might, it kind of, might kind of be fuzzy for us, like, like looking through a windshield that's not scraped off, right? We can't see out, right? So, so when, when things in our lives aren't clear, hmm, I wonder what we can do. Do you have any idea of something we can do when we're not sure what to do? We can't. We can't scrape ice off our, our windshields, but, hmm, who do you think we could talk to? God, yeah, we can talk to God and say, hey, God, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure how to move forward, so I really need your help. Okay? Yeah? Um, and we can read our Bibles, too. But, um so anyway, let's think of the ice scraper when, when, uh, to remind us that we can always talk to God to make things clear, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember the ice scraper as a reminder that we can talk to you and you make the way clear. Sometimes we have to wait a while. But you're always there. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Help us to always be faithful to you. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, choir. Um, I asked them to sing that song, so um, it, it came to mind. I hadn't thought of it in probably 30 years, um, but I, I thought of it I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and um, uh, yeah, and certainly, you know, God led me to to preach on God's will uh, today, and so. Uh, the chorus. So the Lord has a will and I have a need to follow that will, to humbly be still, to rest in it, nest in it, fully be blessed in it, following my Father's will. So if it sounded somewhat familiar, Amy Grant recorded that like a very long time ago, maybe 40 years ago. I don't know. If I, um, thank you. Again, choir. Um, Dave, we're going to uh, show a, a video now. I, I had planned to show show it two weeks ago when when the snow uh, prevented us from being here. So um, this is the skit guys, and um, I'm just going to let it speak for itself. Okay, thanks. I mean it. I mean it, mean it. I could not possibly mean it anymore. I got this. Candy bars, gone. Funyuns, gone. Ice cream, candy bars and Funyuns are gone. This year, I'm going to connect with people, IRL. In real life. I made a list. That means I mean it. I'm going to take care of myself. Right after I figure out who that is other than a mom, which I love. I beat myself up. I'm never good enough. That has to change. Why do I do that? I'm such an idiot. See? This year I'm going to work on being the cool dad, you know? Maybe go to skate park, hang out with my kids. No biggie. <laughs> this works, right? I gotta learn to forgive myself. You know, give myself a break. Not be perfect. I've got it. I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone by volunteering at the hospital. Maybe the pet shelter. Because cats, they're so much easier. This year, I'm going to forgive my mom. Now that I am a mom, I, I totally get it. This year, I'm going to start reading literature. You know, books and such. Because I hear it's good for me. This year, I'm shaving my back hair. I am tired of those kids at the neighborhood pool calling me Sasquatch. It's just that I am comfortable staying in my comfort zone. Who am I kidding? God, I wear myself out trying to outdo everyone. I, I can one-up everything, and it's exhausting. 
have a lot of baggage, and it is not all from the mall. Well, some of it is. I'm trying, God. I am. But there's a reason why I'd rather stay at home. I'm weak, God. I know it. You know it. And you know what, God? This year, I'm giving you all the places that hurt. I'm going to give you all of my failed attempts that I think are going to make me a better man. You are a strong fortress, God. You. And I'm going to let you be strong in my weakness. All right, God. I'm going to start with the best relationship. You and me. And then we'll move outward from there. Because this year, I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. This year, I mean it. I mean it. Mean it. I could not <laughs> Okay. So, thank you, Dave. Um, hope you found that meaningful. Uh, you know, it was somewhat humorous, but I think it got the point across. Um, and God wants us to be real. Okay, and he knows when we're not, so we might as well be real, right? And if your New Year's resolutions have already been blown, there's grace. Because Lamentations tells us new every morning are his mercies. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Okay. All right, friends, as we come to our time of prayer, by the way, who did you invite to worship this week? I hope every week you invite someone to worship. So, anyway, do you have joys or concerns to share? A few, um, I learned that uh, Nelda Lynch fell and is at um, Absolute. So I will be seeing her this afternoon. Um, Lorraine Reynolds is in rehab back at Vestal Park. And I know she and, and Dick would appreciate cards. Um, I intended to have the address uh, on the back table, and I failed to do that. So hopefully that will be there next week if you need their address. Or you can call during the week and get it. Okay. Um, also, um, you probably learned that uh, Gerald Hollenbeck passed away uh, uh, quite soon after his 106th birthday. Amazing. Just amazing. And his life will be celebrated uh, next Saturday at 1 o'clock at Richard's. So. Also, I uh, want to ask prayer for uh, Deb Arnold uh, and her family. I know Deb is out of uh, this church and heard the call to pastoral ministry. and uh, But uh, her father is near death. So we just ask your prayers for Deb and her family. Anybody else? My mother asked uh, if everybody would pray for her to get a little stronger so she can come here to be with us. Well, that'd be great. So if you didn't hear that, uh, Bev's mom, Donna. Uh, is asking for prayers that, uh, and she's over at Riverview, right? And uh, that uh, she'll be strong enough to come and join us here. So that'd be great. Thank you. Some of you may know uh, this past week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I was at the Bishop's Retreat in Corning, um, and it was all about um, taking care of ourselves. And I didn't realize how much I needed it until I got there. <laughs> it was amazing. So I just want to thank God for, for that. And uh, 
Yeah. And I need you to hold me accountable. Keep asking me how I'm doing and if I'm cutting down on those M&Ms and stuff. So. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we are created for good works of love and mercy and justice. Strengthen us in this time of worship that we may carry that out. That we may share the love of Christ with all whom we meet. And Lord, it can get discouraging when we think of this crazy, broken world in which we live. But we do pray for that day when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into printing hooks, when war will be studied no more. For Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. And we know that peace doesn't just mean the absence of war, but means wholeness in you. Calm the storms in our lives and calm the storms around the world, Lord, with an end to the war in Ukraine for an end to the war between Israel and Hamas, for an end to the tensions in the Sudan and Myanmar and other places around the world. Lord, for things heating up in the Persian Gulf, Bless the efforts of those working for peace. We pray for wisdom and courage and strength for President Biden and other world leaders. And also for our Bishop Hector Burgos, our District Superintendent Bob Colvick Campbell. And for ourselves, that we would be able to do what you're calling us to do. To be the difference in this village that you are calling us to be. In the name and with the love of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray for those in need of your healing hand. whether in body, mind, spirit, relationship, or situation. We continue to remember baby Max, Donnie, family of Vivian Crown, the family of Gerald Hollenbeck, and for all who mourn. We also lift up to you Larry and Bev and Judy, and Rich, and John, and Nelda, and Dave, and Tyler, Dick, and Lorraine, Frank, and David, Tracy, and Eileen, Jerry, Shelley, Hugh, and Renee, all of our, our shut-ins. We lift up Donna to you. We lift up Deb Arnold and her family in this difficult time. Shower your grace upon them. May they feel your arms of love around them, embracing them, and giving them peace. Lord, we pray for those devastated by natural disasters. We continue to pray for migrants from Central America that 
he would keep them safe. And Lord, we do want to dream the dreams that you have for us. We want to do your will. Show us the way. Like the ice scraper on the windshield. Give us clarity of, of sight. And when it comes to your will, may we rest in it, nest in it, and fully be blessed in it. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus and continue to pray as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Knowing and celebrating that all that we have and all that we are belongs to God, let us offer unto him his rightful tithe, our offerings, and ourselves. The ushers, please come forward. Lord, bless and guide the use of these gifts that they may further your kingdom so that more and more would come to know your will that they can rest in it, nest in it, and fully be blessed in it through Christ our Lord. Bless the gift and the giver 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing, and our next hymn will be number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. be seated. <clears throat> Today's scripture lesson comes from Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate you stepping in for Ellie today. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds and our actions in response be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you carry cash, 
you have a declaration of faith in your pocket or in your purse. Do you know what it is? You got it. You got it. Declaration is on every piece of money, whether U.S. currency or coins, and says, in God we trust. Uh, and you heard Colleen say, uh, when she read our scripture lesson from Proverbs, it encourages us to trust in the Lord. Easier said than done, though, right? The declaration on our money may not be our actual reality. We don't always trust in God, do we? Blondin was a 19th century ac acrobat famous for his tightrope act 160 feet above Niagara Falls on a rope which was over a thousand feet long. In 1860, a royal party from Britain saw Blondin cross the tightrope on stilts and again blindfolded. After that, he stopped halfway and cooked and ate an omelet. Next, he wheeled a wheelbarrow from one side to the other and returned with a sack of potatoes in it. Then Blondin approached the royal party. He asked the Duke of Newcastle, do you believe I could take a man across the tightrope in this wheelbarrow? Yes, I do, said the Duke. Hop in then, said Blondin. Charlie Reeb suggests that the Duke declined uh, Blondin's challenge. He might have believed Blondin could do it, but he wasn't about to trust him with his life. Now, we believe, keep that in mind, by the way, we believe that the writer of Proverbs was David's son, Solomon. Proverbs is a collection of wisdom writings. It doesn't read like a narrative like much of Scripture does. There's no cohesive story in Proverbs, but as I said, it's a series of writings from which we can glean much wisdom. One thing I continually pray for, for myself, is wisdom. A few years ago, I made it a practice to read a chapter of Proverbs every day. There are 31 chapters, so, you know, you repeat it every month. So I read the book of Proverbs 12 times that year. I encourage you to try it. I should do it again, too. Verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. Oh, how I sometimes fall into the trap of relying on my own insight. How about you? To trust means to rely or to depend on. Do we rely on God or do we try to take control ourselves? When we trust on our own insight, yeah, how does that work for us? <laughs> It may seemingly work for a while, but it won't last. And in talking about discerning, discerning is just a fancy word for trying to figure out God's will, sometimes it just isn't clear. Sometimes that windshield is full of ice, right? What not to do is often clear. But what to do does not always come with such clarity. Of course, we need to pray and consult Scripture in order to figure out God's will for us. When I pray and the path is not clear, my practice is to do what makes sense to me. And if it's not right, God will make that clear because I will get very uncomfortable. Okay? See some nodding heads, so you, you can resonate with that. God will make me very uncomfortable if I'm going down the wrong path. That's when God's telling me, nope, don't go that way. Then, of course, I need to change direction. Sometimes the way is very clear, but other times it's as clear as mud, <laughs> at least for a while. The more I consult scripture and pray, 
the doors begin to open. I don't know about you, but I want to see the whole picture all at once, but that's not generally the way God reveals His will. It's usually one step at a time. That's what I'm finding with our life together as the congregation of the Uigo United Methodist Church. Things are revealed bit by bit, not all at once. By the way, did you read the upper room this morning? The writer was talking about God leading her to move across the country, but she didn't want to go. didn't make sense. She loved her, her friends and her church and, and everything. And then, But she was obedient, and it turned out to be the right thing. And now she loves where she is and is thriving in a new church. Rest in it, nest in it, fully be blessed in it. Following my Father's will. Yeah. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't also say that talking and praying with trusted Christian friends is another way to help discern, to figure out God's path for us. And again, the way will rarely be made clear immediately. I love it when that happens, but it's rare. Getting back to the scripture. Verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. What does that mean? Well, a straight path doesn't necessarily mean a path free from difficulties and challenges. It does mean that a clear direction will be shown to us. Acknowledging God in all our ways may mean going where we don't want to go. Like the woman who wrote the upper room this morning. Acknowledging God means even if we can't see how, we can trust that God will make a way. Remember Moses and the Hebrew people at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army closing in? God made a way when it didn't seem there was one. That scripture is an example of one that is instructive to us and meant to encourage us. And scripture is full of examples like that. You may be in an unhappy marriage or in a financial bind for which you can see no way out. Or you may need clarity about how to deal with a certain situation. If we sincerely seek God's will and not try to control the outcome, He will make the way clear. Nowhere does it say it will be easy. Darn. <laughs> It just says our path will be made straight. Another way to interpret that is by, um, by making the way straight. God will remove the obstacles that are preventing us from living in his will and his way. We must seek God's way and not lean on our own understanding. Later on in Proverbs 16.25 we read, Sometimes there is a way that seems to be right, but in the end it is the way to death. Trusting God will sometimes mean giving up what we think is best. That's why Proverbs 3, five reminds us that it is unwise to rely on our own understanding. We may think we know best. But God knows best. You may remember from math class that a shape with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Perhaps you've heard the term Wesleyan quadrilateral. Perhaps you haven't. John Wesley, founder of the Methodist movement, never used the term quadrilateral. Uh, but it was Wesleyan scholar Albert Outler who coined the term Wesleyan quadrilateral in the 1960s. Nance, what are you talking about? Okay, in our Wesleyan theology, there are four criteria for discerning God's will. But hear me now, all need to be bathed in prayer. All need to be bathed in prayer. Those four criteria are scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. 
The four do not have equal standing, however. Scripture has the most weight. Scripture is the primary source of our doctrine. Now, I rarely quote the United Methodist Book of Discipline in my sermons, but this information can be found there in paragraph 105 of the 2016 United Methodist Book of Discipline, which because of COVID is the one we are still under, states the following. As we open our minds and hearts to the word of God through the words of human beings inspired by the Holy Spirit, Faith is born and nourished, our understanding is deepened, and the possibilities for transforming the world become apparent to us. It goes on to say that our standards affirm the Bible as the source of all, all that is necessary and sufficient for salvation. Hear me, scripture contains all that is necessary and sufficient for salvation. And it is to be received through the Holy Spirit as the true rule and guide for our faith and practice. The primacy of Scripture is acknowledged in theological reflection and speaks tradition to tradition, experience, and reason. As tradition, experience, and reason can speak to our interpretation of Scripture. We were just talking about that in our study on homosexuality this past Thursday. So Scripture is the first criterion. The second is tradition. This doesn't uh, refer to individual congregational traditions, but rather looks to historical remembrance of the countless times the Holy Spirit has transformed human lives. We can learn from destructive and constructive traditions of our faith and move forward positively in God's grace. Another criteria for discerning God's will is experience. While experience is powerful, I want to hasten to add that it is not more important, nor does it carry more weight than Scripture. Please hear me. Now, I've had times when my experience has caused me to realize that I must be interpreting Scripture incorrectly. I am in no way saying that Scripture doesn't have authority. And I am not putting experience above Scripture at all. I take Scripture very seriously, very seriously, despite the rumor that was going around the village several months ago that I do not. I do take Scripture very seriously. What I am saying is that in wrestling with some passages, I have found that experience can inform my interpretation of Scripture, and Scripture can inform how I view and we view our experience. We bring all of our experiences with us when we read Scripture. We don't set them aside. There's an old adage about experience being a good teacher. Well, I believe it is if we choose to learn from our experience. The fourth criteria for discerning God's will in our Wesleyan theology is reason. The Book of Discipline says this, Although we recognize that God's revelation and our experience of God's grace continually surpass the scope of human language and reason, we also believe that any disciplined theological work calls for the careful use of reason. We were talking about that at our Thursday study, too. The Book of Discipline also says this, which pertains to the relationship of Scripture with reason. We interpret individual texts in light of their place in the Bible as a whole. As we work with each text, we take into account what we've been able to learn about the original context and intention of that text. Okay? The Book of Discipline also states, In the name of Jesus Christ, we are called to work within our diversity while experiencing patience and forbearance with one another. Such patience stems neither from indifference toward the truth or from any, hear this, or from any indulgent tolerance of error, but from an awareness that we know only in part and that none of us is able to search the mysteries of God. We proceed with our theological task, trusting that the Spirit will grant us wisdom to continue our journey with the whole people of God. 
through acquired knowledge over the years, we can now reason that what, what some scriptures mean or, or, or if and how they apply today. Okay? For example, scripture says, slaves obey your masters. We know slavery is wrong. Did you know that Methodism split into North and South over the issue of slavery? Not a proud part of our history. And did you know that North and South didn't come together until 1939? 1939. Not so good. Did you know that in Deuteronomy it says if your son disobeys you, he should be executed? There's a passage in the New Testament believing that a young boy was demon-possessed. He was frothing at the mouth. and having convulsions. As a former special ed teacher, my guess is he wasn't demon-possessed. My guess is he had epilepsy. But they didn't know that then. Friends, I'm not saying Scripture doesn't matter. It does. I am saying that we can understand that there were laws at the time that our reason tells us not to apply today, like slavery, right? Or like killing, not killing a disobedient child, right? We need to be careful because it would be a tragic mistake to say that none of it applies today. It most certainly does. This book most certainly does apply to our lives today. Please hear me. And I trust I demonstrate that in the sermon by applying Scripture to our everyday lives every week. Friends, if you have questions about this or are unsettled, please talk to me. All right? And by the way, we don't have to agree. We can still love each other and come together. In another devotional book I used this morning, there was an, I'm getting off track, but, but it talked about um, a woman who baked cookies and took them to the door of every person in her neighborhood who had a sign in their yard promoting uh, the candidate that she is not supporting. Okay? And she took cookies to every one of her neighbors. And it opened the door for conversation. And they didn't have to hate each other just because they disagreed politically. How about that? Okay. Do you remember the illustration at the beginning of the sermon with the duke that didn't want to get in the wheelbarrow and go across the tightrope? Remember? Charlie Reeb applies that story this way. If we want to move across the chasm between where we are and where God wants us to be, we must trust God with our lives. If we want our dead ends to turn into new beginnings, the only option is to trust God with our life. If you desire for God to remove the obstacles before you, you must put all of your life in his hands. We must trust God in all his ways, acknowledge him, submit to him, depend on him, trust him, and he will make straight our paths. If we want to turn our dead ends into new beginnings, the only option is to trust God 
with our life. If you desire for God to remove the obstacles before you, you must put all of your life in his hands. Friends, one sermon is not going to do justice to discerning God's will for us individually or as the congregation of the Uigo United Methodist Church. Our leadership is reading a book together, which I'm hoping will help us discern some things moving forward. It's going to take all of us working and praying and studying Scripture together. It's a journey we're on together. And I, for one, believe it's an exciting journey. And that God is worthy of our trust. May it be so. Please stand if you're able. Our last hymn is number 451, Be Thou My Vision. vision, O ruler of all. The Lord has a will and I have a need to follow that will, to humbly be still, to rest in it, nest in it, fully be blessed in it, following my Father's will. Family of God, disciples of Jesus Christ, go forth in peace. Trusting in God and not leaning on our own understanding as we follow God's will. And as you go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with us this day and always. Amen.